Hey guys, Sean here from Tesla Family. Welcome to my 100th video. Wow, this has been an awesome feat. Thank you to all of my subscribers out there who have been following all my videos all along. And if you're new to the channel, thanks for checking out this video. Be sure to check out my other playlists below. I've got videos on my Tesla Model 3, Supercharger Tours, over 20 videos on my Tesla Solar Journey, battery powered yard equipment, and my electric motorcycle. To celebrate, I'm going to share with you this special delivery. My Tesla Solar Journey just keeps getting better and better. I had my 7.56 kilowatt system installed back in June of 2020 and just loving the performance of the system. I've got several videos following my performance in my Tesla Solar playlist. Be sure to check that out. The contents of this envelope is a check to my utility company for my annual excess generation payout. Yes, my utility company is paying me. So the question of the day is, why don't you have a money printer on your roof? All right, let's head inside, open this envelope up, and take a look at the breakdown of my excess generation payout. All right, we're up here in the office and we're gonna go ahead and open up our check from the utility company. Pretty excited for this. This is our first one, being our first year with Tesla solar panels on our roof. Looking forward to many more years of excess generation payouts. It really is like having a money printer on your roof. What other addition can you put onto your home that makes income for you and your family. All right, so getting into the check here. Here's our check for $148.83 straight from our utility company into our mailbox. For privacy concerns, I just made sure to cover up a lot of the sensitive material, but you can see here the total on the right-hand side here. Before showing you my April bill, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how my utility company shows excess generation on my utility bill. So here's from the FAQ section of my utility company's website. How is excess generation shown on my utility bill? Customers in Maryland see negative energy consumption in the excess generation summary section of the bill showing the excess generation carryover history. The excess is carried over month to month, a lot like rollover data on your phone, until used or until the customer's anniversary payout. And that's what we just had, is our anniversary payout for our excess generation. Okay, here is our April 2021 energy bill. And what I want to draw your attention to is a small statement down here toward the lower left that says a check will be mailed separately for the amount of $148.83. This is a payment for 2,445 kilowatt hours of excess generation at a rate of six cents per kilowatt hour. So that's the rate that they've paid me out. This is the total kilowatt hours of excess generation and here is the amount of the check. The only other things to show you here on the bill is that we do have a credit that we have been carrying forward for the past several months. This is an energy wise credit that our utility gives us uh, for being an energy efficient home during the summertime. We've been able to carry that right through the winter and that has been used to pay our $8.50 electric charges. Again, that $8.50 is just a customer charge. We're not actually paying for any electricity that we're using, just paying to be connected. On the right is our electricity usage in kilowatt hours. Blue is May 2019 to April 2020 and green is May 2020 to April 2021. Wherever you don't see green, so July, August, September, October of last year, and March and April of this year, that means that we generated more than what we used, so we have a negative kilowatt hour balance, not showing up on this graph that's only positive kilowatt hours. Okay, navigating to the energy use yearly view, it's a nice graph here showing in blue the net energy used and in green the net energy produced. 
along with the weather as an average temperature for the month. We can see that it goes up in the summertime and goes down in the wintertime. Since we do have some missing data from July and August of last year, I ended up moving all of this over onto a spreadsheet. Okay, moving over to the Google Sheet, you can see I did end up filling in the data. I just went back to my old bills and calculated the net energy produced for July and August and added them in here with Microsoft Paint. Not sure why it was missing from the web version, but here it is. Um, it is a little bit stretched out, but I wanted to try to match these columns in the image to the columns in the spreadsheet. So taking a look at the yearly view here from April 2020 right through April 2021, you can see from April 2020 through June 2020, before we had solar, we used between 400 and almost 700 kilowatt hours of electricity. Uh, we were just paying the electricity bill during those months, and then we had our solar panels installed at the end of June. 2020 so from July through October right through the summer of last year we were net energy produced meaning that we produced more energy than what we needed and pushed a bunch back into the grid giving us a ton of credits from November through February the shortest uh, daylight hours of the year and coldest portions of the year um, we ended up being net energy used so our home was using more than the energy produced by our solar panels that can be expected in the winter time and the colder months of the year but by March and April of this year we're back to net energy produced. So I wanted to show you the breakdown of how we got to 2,445 kilowatt hours of a credit. Back in July of 2020 the electric company was using a time of use plan and they were actually crediting us the net kilowatt hours produced for peak, off peak, and intermediate peak times. They were doing that for July and August and I wonder if there might have been some kind of error there because those numbers are very, very high for those two months of the year. I mean, it is summertime, but I think that those numbers are quite inflated. There might have been some sort of error there with the time of use plan. But by September, we went back to a normal residential straight rate plan. And you can see the numbers are probably more in line with what we actually used or overproduced. But anyways, the bulk of the credit that we generated was in July and August of 2020. That was uh, 833 kilowatt hours of excess in July and 1473 kilowatt hours of excess in August. Then by September, 71 kilowatt hours of excess. October, 50 kilowatt hours of excess. In November, even though we were still dipping into the credits from the summertime, for the month we were net energy used. We had to pull 133 kilowatt hours from the grid, um, more than what we produced for that month. In December, net energy used of 293 kilowatt hours, January 240 kilowatt hours, and February 2021 99 kilowatt hours. Back into March of this year, we had a lot of wonderful sunshine and we really overproduced that month. Uh, 455 kilowatt hours overproduced. And then in April, 328 kilowatt hours net energy produced. So that total is 2,445 that you saw on my electric bill. They multiplied that kilowatt hours times the 6.08717 rate, which I believe is a wholesale rate per kilowatt hour. And that's how we got $148.83 back in our excess generation annual payout. I definitely want to plug the seasonal production videos that I've been producing ever since I had my Tesla solar panels installed. I've made videos for summertime covering July, August, and September, autumn, which is October, November, December, winter, January, February, March, and then I will be producing a spring video for April, May, and June of this year, and I'll also end up doing an annual video as well. Really hope you guys like this information. I'm happy to share it with you. And this is just another example of how your roof can be turned into a money printer. Again, the utility company is paying me for energy, which is awesome. If you're interested in adding Tesla solar panels to your roof, take a look at several of my solar panel videos. I have a solar playlist with over 20 videos on my Tesla solar journey. And I also have a referral link that if you end up ordering Tesla solar panels, you can get a $100 credit back after your system's activation. Moving on, I wanted to talk to you also about, since this is my 100th video, I also just recently hit 1,000 subscribers, so thank you to all my subscribers out there, and if you really like our content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and help our channel grow. You can see we have steady growth here, uh, over 
the past 28 days, but even if I uh, change back to the last year, we continue with that steady growth path. And it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. All you're doing is literally telling YouTube, hey, when Tesla Family Channel releases a video, I want to get a notification. Doesn't cost you a dime. I also wanted to share with you the number of playlists that I have. I have a playlist if you're interested in electric motorcycles, supercharger tours. Every time I go to a supercharger, I try to make a video. Uh, Tesla Solar, there's over there's my 21 videos on Tesla Solar. I also have uh, five videos on Tesla service so far, a couple collaboration videos, and a few videos on battery-powered yard equipment. And I'll also let you know what my top 10 videos are. Kind of interesting for my... 100th video why not let you know my top 10 so my number one video since I started my channel about two years ago is this installing a NEMA 1450 outlet to charge my Tesla Model 3 so far 22,000 views which is really cool um, it's well liked and it's my most popular video my second most popular video is my Tesla solar glass roof estimate video 18,000 views and then ordering Tesla solar panels 15,000 views Tesla solar panels power on, so this is where I power down my system. 13,000 views, 11,000 views for my installation video of my Tesla solar panels that occurred back in June 2020. And my Zero FXS electric motorcycle, love that bike. Also fairly popular among, among the motorcycle community with 5,000 views. 5,000 views on the video where I show you how I paid for my Tesla solar panels. Almost 4,000 views on my six month summary with my Tesla solar panel, so that's quite popular as well. Um, I imagine when I have that one year production video, that will be quite popular. And then the ninth most popular video, our Tesla solar panel layout. So that video, I show you the layout that we have of our panels and an alternate layout that Tesla sent us and show you the differences. And then my 10th most popular video, 993. That was my first electric bill after adding Tesla solar panels back in July, 2020. All right guys, thanks for watching the video. If you really enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to Tesla Family Channel here on YouTube. We really appreciate all of our subscribers and everyone who watches our videos. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you soon. Check out all of our other videos as well. Also, follow us on Twitter at Tesla Family Chan. Use my referral code to buy a new Tesla and you will get 1,000 free supercharging miles. Or if you use my referral code to buy Tesla solar roof or solar panels, you'll get a $100 reward after system activation.